Okay, afternoon class. Like we often do on Mondays, we're going to look at our course outline. We are starting Unit 11 today, getting introduced to a themed full-color spot illustration. These are sometimes called graphics that are designed by digital artists for multiple purposes, right? They're a little different than logos because logos have to be incredibly clear <laughs> and versatile to work in black and white and in color. Spot illustrations generally work in one way with a little bit more detail for things like stickers or tattoos or t-shirt designs. And you're going to have the option of setting up a Redbubble page for your work. Uh, here is a Redbubble page. And here you can see spot illustrations, right? These are free floating. For example, this is one I did for to commemorate my grandmother. And it is a free floating illustration. It is with line art and then color behind. Sometimes they have text, sometimes they don't. What we're going to do for this class is our spot illustration is going to be primarily pictorial. So something like this that can then be used as a clean PNG in lots of different ways for like shirt design, for stickers, for tote bags. They can even be, if they're, they're saved as good spot illustrations, they can even be tiled into patterns. Let's see if I have an example of that. No, I don't. Oh, I do. On socks. If you want chicken with their head cut off socks, right? Because you can arrange that free floating image that isn't cropped in any way you like, right? And so these are incredibly versatile, versatile types of illustration. It's why when you're looking at illustrations, sometimes you'll see full page illustrations like this, and other times you'll see free floating illustrations like this. And so we are learning it through spot illustration. And one easy way to think about it as, is as stickers, things that are kind of transferable. So if you do sticker design, you don't want to have it just arbitrarily cut off like that. That doesn't look great. It's better to control that shape somehow. Like I like this better. So I don't think spot illustrations are very effective when they're just horizontally cut and cropped. So you want to think of the full shape as you design it. And I'm happy to give input on your sketches. And they should show off personality, right? Even though they're based on line art. You definitely want your personality to shine through with your line quality. And then eventually, which we'll do next class, our color choices. So if we look at the assignment, we have a week to do this. They're due on November 4th. And there are three requirements to it. You can see them here. A sketch, which will get posted today. Black vector line art, which we will learn how to do today and hopefully have done by next class. And then some form of coloring behind the line art, which we'll be learning next class. It's the only deliverable in this unit. So let's try to understand it as cleanly as we can. And then the other thing we'll do today is we'll have um, your individual presentations opened up so that you can choose the contemporary digital artist you would want to present on it in the middle of November. All right. So this is what I was doing last class. I'm going to close out of Photoshop because we will use freeware as much as possible, but then we will have to use Adobe Illustrator just to image trace into vector files like we did for our logo. So let's look at some of these examples. So this is a past instructor example. This is actually uh, before Putin became such a, a war criminal in history. And it was trying to kind of make fun of him and, and make light of him. That's a different theme than, than this semester. This was a theme of foreign policy, right? So I, I did Putin as He-Man kind of with the Russian sickle and hammer uh, 
smashing a Ritz cracker, and it was all so that it could be put with the text Putin on the Ritz in a poster in the next assignment. But you can see the sketch, the clean line art, and then the coloring behind the line art. Here we have this little mini Cthulhu creature. Doesn't matter if your sketch is drawn big or small, but it does matter that you like the shape of it, right? Because as you clean it up with your, with your line art, this isn't like a logo where you might re rebuild it entirely. You're basically going to be tracing over your sketch and just really cleaning it up. So notice how the lines can be thick to thin. They can really show the personality. And then when we color, you have the option for coloring the lines as well. So even though the lines here are in blue, that is still line art. It's not digital painting, it's still digital coloring. So on and on and on. I wanted you to notice thick lines, varied lines, very technical thin lines, which are usually used for animation, right? Whatever way you do your line art, we're going to end up coloring behind it. And we're going to use Adobe Illustrator, even though it's a program we have to pay for in order to um, turn it into a vector. Now, notice this one, because often this is used for character design, you know, to do kind of cartooning, to do your own version of things. You'll see a lot of those online. People will ask for their, their avatar to be illustrated and turned into a spot illustration. But instead of drawing the whole body, you want to find a shape that contains it or a nice way to kind of make that shape interesting. So containing it within a circle and then breaking out of the circle is a nice solution to that. You can also think of it as tattoo design. And you could be inspired by, you know, whatever you're inspired by. I get really inspired by Santa Cruz skateboard graphics. This is what I grew up with, these kind of stickers. We could buy these in vending machines, collect them. Yeah, I, I grew up in California. And it just has really clean, you know, graphic black lines and then pretty easy to understand coloring solutions. And sometimes they'll use different kind of line art styles. This is called a stippling line art style. There's hatching line art styles. See if I can find an example of hatching. And I have these in the assignment as well. Let's see. Yeah, so this is done with a lot of hatching. So whatever inspires you, it's kind of good to keep that in mind. If you're inspired by a certain animated show, usually animation is, if it's 2D animation, is uh, line art based and then colored. And then we'll talk about all the different types of coloring more next class. Ooh, that one's very sophisticated, fancy. All right, so we can see more examples here from past students. Interesting. Huh. I guess that link is broken. I'll have to fix that. All right. So, this is the kind of digital image that's perfect for t-shirts, stickers, tattoo designs, and it needs to be able to work on a variety of backgrounds, right? So not just a black shirt, not just a white shirt, not just a yellow shirt, but any kind of background. And that's going to make it a good start for our poster design next assignment. So these are some of the ways that you're going to approach your line art. You can do it with like just thick graphic lines which is the way I'm going to approach it. You can do it more cartoony and gesturally, maybe with a mix of stippling, which is using little dots for tones. You can do like fully stippled, lots and lots of tiny black dots. Or you can use lots of hatching, which are these kind of linear, this is linear hatching, um, where it kind of follows the form. This is actually called directional linear hatching to get more of that texture. You basically decide, this is our big cheat sheet for digital coloring, which is a, a big curriculum goal for the second half of the course, is to understand the difference between digital coloring and digital painting and what's needed for both. So we're going to start today with our sketch, and then we're going to clean it up with vectorized line art. 
And then next class, we're going to fill it in with color, starting with flat color, splitting that color into lights and darks. And then we have the option of softening those and then adding what's called full spectrum. Color holds, that's where the, uh, the line art actually changes color as well and, and can get colored over. Offsets are things we would put behind it to help it work on different backgrounds. And then we're going to even end up understanding color separation for professional printing, which we talked a little bit about last week with our midterm. I have these slides here, an exhaustive explanation of digital coloring, but this is all after you have your line art. So in this example, this is a, an illustrator out of Pasadena. You can see it starts with loose sketching, then cleaning up with an ink pen, then erasing, and then digitally coloring. So some people like to do their line art by hand. Traditionally, you'll have that option as well. This is another little cheat sheet showing the process. So we're doing our sketch, then we're doing the clean vector line art. I'm going to show you how to do it traditionally with ink on tracing paper, how to do it in photo P, which is called digital inking, with a tablet, and how to bring those in to a vector program to image trace, right? So photo P actually works pretty well to smooth out your lines. And then we'll talk more about the coloring behind the work. But right now we just need that, that clean line art. Your line art can contain solid black shapes. Those are called full bleeds. Like her hair is the only thing that's solid black. And then this would be the flat color. And then eventually that could turn into far more dimensional color if needed. And then there's lots of special effects we'll talk about with color. I use Wonder Woman because of the primary colors. So some professional examples, because you see this a lot in illustration, especially for poster design, especially for promotional design. Sketch, vector line art, coloring, raster color behind the, the outlines. Sketch. This is kind of an interesting process from David Sasella. And I include links to them if you want to look more at these artists. But what's so interesting is his sketch is so refined. He loves pencil drawing, right? So his sketch is incredibly detailed in pencil, but then he turns it all into a vector. You can see all the anchor points there just to get clean, fairly graphic line art. And then he colors it all digitally, usually in duotone hard edge, so that it has the versatility that you want a spot illustration to have. Yeah, kind of decorative graphics, like window displays, that kind of thing. But you don't need to sketch it with this much <laughs> detail, right? because you're going to be tracing it into line art anyway. So let's look at a past student and how they approached it. This was on a different theme, of course. But the theme for this past student example was on sleep and promoting sleep on campus for students who aren't sleeping enough, especially after midterms. So the first thing they did is they found inspirations that they like. We all have visuals that we like. I like Santa Cruz skateboard graphics. You might like Gravity Falls, whatever it might be, right? Pay attention to the colors they use and the line weight they use. So they were inspired by this kind of stuff. And then their work, this was their sketch. Their concept was to draw a head and then have like sheep floating and flying over it, like counting sheep with some stars. Then when they cleaned up their line art, they made kind of really clear decisions about where things should go. And then they used duotone coloring, hard edge coloring behind. All right, so what is our theme? I say it's optional, but that's only if you really don't want to do this theme, because I think it's good to have a theme. It's good to have a box you want to, you have to work inside of, right, to be creative. And the reason I'm choosing vote for this, V-O-T-E, is because right now it's a presidential year. We have early voting happening right now on campus through Friday of this week. Um, and it's tense out there. I don't know if it's tense in your circles, but it's tense out there. So this is what it feels like with all the different political conversations going on, all the anxieties. And then this 